everybody. Welcome to Polymer Clay TV. I'm Kira Sly. And I'm Alicia Ginsberg. And today we're going to show you a quick tutorial on another fun project that you can make using our digital download collage sheet, which kind of looks like this. It's got the Venus, um, Birth of Venus, and a whole bunch of beautiful butterflies. And if you want to find that download, you can go over to craftylink.com, and it's on the downloads page. And um, it comes both in forward-facing, so that you can use it for artwork and ATCs, and in reverse, so that you can use it for image transfers. And Elisa is going to do a little image transfer project right now. Yeah. So I have a little demo for you. and. Last week I had shown you this pendant that I created using the digital download. I used the word uh, dream and the butterfly came from the digital download and I pieced it together. And I'm going to show you how I went about getting this started. So just bear with me because my webcam is in a different place than my screen. <laughs> so I will get this pointed down. Yep. And yeah. um, We've been working really hard on creating really interesting digital downloads that are a full page of all these different areas that you can cut out and use for different things. So Yeah, and I cut out this butterfly, as you can see here, and I just, you know, you find what you want on the download and you cut out whatever portion you want after I've transferred this onto magic transfer paper. And you do that with a laser printer. So that's important that you use the laser printer because an inkjet's liquid and it would just dissolve the paper. That's why you have to use the laser printer. So I've already cut out some pieces of clay. Um, I've used a few different tools, so let me just show you the, what those are. Those I have a knitting needle, which I'm going to use to help me make the part that, that would hang on the necklace. Obviously, you'll need a scissor to cut out your, your design. I have a clay blade, which I always have handy, and I have a brush because I added some powder pigments. Of course, I have the powder pigments, and I bought these on sale for four dollars for a set. I want to say like ten, and they're made for cake decorating. But that's what I use to decorate these, and I use like this scooped end here. And you could probably use like. A pe the end of a pen would work just as well, uh, you know, but these were fun and I thought I'd, I'd try them. So I have those, and I have my bowl of water because I can't run this under the faucet at the moment to show you. So um, that's all you really need, and what you want to do after you cut out your design is you want to lay it flat down with the, the image facing the clay, and you want to just make sure that there's no air pockets in between. So I had already cut this out and made it to size. So I'm working backwards, so just bear with me. And once you do that, actually, let me pick it up because it's not lining up right and it's going to look weird. Okay. You can always cut out some, some of the extra clay after the fact. So you don't have to get it exactly the shape that you want it. You just have to get it to, a, to you know, around that shape. And I'm just working on my craft mat here, so it's easy to get up. And I just, when I'm doing this, all I do is I rub my fingers over it, make sure there's no air pockets, and that's it. And then I'll run it under like a, a light stream of water. But since we don't have that, I'm going to put it into this water and just kind of move my finger over it to get the paper off. And it just starts to dissolve right off. You can see the pulp in the, in the water. It's that easy. And you can, you can do this multiple times. You don't have to just do it the one time. Like if there's any paper left over, you can go back. But my recommendation is to do it one time and let it dry. That way you've basically sealed the image onto the clay and you won't have a problem with any of it coming off. It's like all, you know, it's better to do a lighter touch the first time and then the second time come back after it dries. And I should have had a paper towel, but oh well. <laughs> I'll, use, I'll use my hand for this. Um, so I actually already transferred this, this dream word, which was part of the kit too. And here I just have a snake that I made. And you just take a piece of clay and roll it out into whatever size snake you want. And I just piece that on the top like so. 
and cut off whatever extra I didn't want. And you can you can just decide for yourself what you like. Now I'm doing this with the regular gold clay, but the other one I showed you I did with the antique gold clay. So I just wanted to show you how different the, the clay looks on different colors, how different the transfer looks on different colors of clay. Because it will look different every single color you change as your background. You know, so that's a factor when you're when you're making something like this. You know. So I would have wish I would have gotten a paper towel. The one thing I forgot to get. Give me one second, I'll grab one. Yeah, magic transfer paper requires laser printer and some water. So make sure you take it down to Office Max or um, Office Depot or someplace like that and tell them that it's laser paper. Exactly. Okay, so here I just wiped it up. Now I made my life easier. <laughs> okay, so I put this on the top there and then I just want to add the word dream up here. So this has already been pre-transferred pre on the clay. And so I have that on there. And then I took a little piece of clay and I created like a rectangle. It's nothing exciting, but just a little rectangle. And you can use your knitting needle to help fold it over. And I'm not folding it all the way over. You can see there's like a little lip there. And that's going to help me so I can get it to here to the background without, you know, having to push on my design as much. It's just, a, it's just something I do. Okay, now when you do this, it may not stick right away if it's wet. So be careful with it and you can you can keep playing with it, but I'm going to turn it over so I can add this on and that little extra part that that I have on there is what I'm going to use to to smooth it onto the back. And you can use your knitting needle to do this. You can kind of roll it over gently. Like this. Now you can do this in, in multiple parts. What you could do is go ahead and bake this first part and then come back and add your, your um, I guess you would call it, what would you call that? Like a little clasp setting or whatever? A bail. A bail. There you go. Kira's better at names than I am. <laughs> so here's the bail. And then I just used these tools. And this is the one that's kind of like a little cup. And I just came. And and just pushed it into the clay a little, like so. Are those Wilton? That's I don't know. No, they were some some brand I got at like TJ Maxx or whatever, and it was like four dollars for like ten of them, and I couldn't pass it up. I figured, well, they all have like different tips. There's something I could do with it. I have to tell you though, I'm not extremely thrilled with them. <laughs> you know, they're okay, but really the tips didn't seem to make different that much of a difference. They all seemed to look the same when you poked it. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you want, you can leave your your knitting needle in there for a minute, and uh, while you're do, doing your little designs, and at this point, you can do any kind of design you want. I I actually also use this scoop one on here too, so I went up with it like this. I'm doing it backwards. Just bear with me, <laughs> but I just use it to create a little bit of a design onto my my, you know, my, my snake. And then I just came back and poked in the middle of it like this. Yeah, a lot of times just adding a little bit of texture will really make your design pop instead of just leaving things plain. It's true because, I mean, it was kind of boring before, the, just this, the snake part, you know, and, and when you add a little oomph to it, it just makes it so much better. So that's all it's entirely up to you to design it however you'd like. And then I just came back with some powdered pigments, and this is just a blue color, plain regular blue. And when you use powdered pigments, let me tell you, a little goes a really, really long way. So <laughs> you could even take a little bit and put it into your cap. And, you know, this may not seem like very much, but let me tell you, it, it is. And then I just went around the sides, and what I did was I kind of feathered it down the side like so, because I wanted it to create like a, I don't want this bright, bright blue, I want more of a feathered color, you know, so I kind of just wiped it off the edges like that. You and can so, also use your fingertips, which is how I do it a lot, just to swipe it along the tops of things. Yeah, you could use a Q-tip, you can use your fingers. 
Uh, but I I used the brush because I had more control. I'm not left-handed, but I just noticed that I was in the screen and you couldn't see anything. <laughs> so, so and then just you know just go at it with whatever you want. If you want to add some ink, maybe, but a little color. I mean, I I wasn't looking to impart massive amounts of color on this. I just wanted it more as a highlight to the design. And I you can put a little on this dream and whatnot. And I wouldn't move it around too much, so you can you can do this on like a deli paper or wax paper. And then at this point, really, it's ready to be baked. I mean, you have your opening right here. You could even bake it with this um, knitting needle in it, but because it's metal and you can bake the metal. But you want to make sure that you turn it a little so that you've got the hole the right size that you're going to need for whatever you're going to string it on before you bake it. So make sure your hole is the right size. And then if you do want to bake the, the needle in there, you can. It's really not necessary. I didn't have any problems with it, with, with this kind of um, thing like collapsing or anything. Polymer clay holds its own pretty good. And that's it. That's as easy as it is. So let me show you the difference. Uh, I'm, I'm busting things. I shouldn't be moving them without baking them. Let me just bring this in there. That one moved apart. So let me see if you can if I can get a little bit closer. Hold on. Well, there's the one. The light's not so great, but there's the one on the bright gold, and here's the one on the antique gold. So you see there there that's the bright gold. I'm in the shadow. And there's the the antique gold. So there's a difference. And you know, you're going to find that whatever clay you use is going to look different, whatever color you use as the background for your transfer. So think about that when you're transferring. And I'll take some pictures and put it on the, the blog so you can see see better. I know it's a little difficult on, on cam to see. But it's really that easy to create some really interesting pieces. And then you would just string them up however you want. Or if you want to put on a, a chain or a black cord or whatever. But obviously, you bake them first. and and I'm using Primo, so it's I think 275, and I usually go about 30 minutes. That that gives it a nice strong bake, I think. So, and then it's ready to wear. If you if you wanted to do an extra step, you could add resin on top of it, and that would give it a whole nother look. Um, anything you want, you could dangle things from the bottom, like Kira did with her earrings. You can yeah, see Kira's wearing, earrings. Wearing the earrings that we made last week with the same kit. Um, so they've got little, I like dangly things, and I put, if you put holes in it, then you've got a spot to add a jump ring or a wrapped wire. You can just poke the holes with your knitting needle or, or if you have like a poker or something like that. Even a regular sewing needle will work if you don't have all these things in your <laughs> repertoire, <laughs> you know. But knitting needles are inexpensive and garage sales are a great place to find them too. We are working on um, some really interesting big things. So if you want to get in on that and get your invitation to, um, to this sort of sneak peeks that we're planning in the months ahead, be sure to head over to Crafty Link and check that out. Is there anything else going on? Um. I don't think so. Not a whole lot. I did. I did post my my last uh, uh, studio video, and you can check that out on the channel as well. I'll be doing them probably once a month or so, and kind of show you what I've been working on. I've been working on a lot of mixed media things because Kira have Kira and I have a big project we're working on, which we hope to get out pretty soon. But um, we're always writing, you know, tutorials and things like that. And actually, we have a tutorial available on the Kindle book store, Amazon, and uh, also on our website. It's on the ultimate guide to crackle techniques. So if you've ever wanted to learn how to crackle polymer clay, we put together this, this really extensive list of different ways you can crackle the clay, different things you can use to crackle the clay, and you get a totally different look each time. So we put together this, this pretty pretty amazing tutorial on what works and what doesn't work because so many times you gotta go out and spend all this money or do all this time testing things but we've done that for you so you don't have to so that's what's all that that's all about and you can if you have an iPad or if you have an Android you can download it from the Kindle marketplace it's called the ultimate guide to crackle arts and crafts 
what's it called exactly, Kira? <laughs> I don't even remember. <laughs> it's called Crackle Techniques, the Ultimate Guide for Polymer Clay Arts and Crafts. There you go. <laughs> so you can find it. And you, you can always put in one of our names, Elisa Ginsberg or Kira Sly, and find us on there too. And you'll see the list of the things that we've done. And so we are working on this really big mixed media one. This has nothing to do with this this thing we're telling you about that's coming soon. And this, when I say this thing coming soon is going to be absolutely amazing, never been done before, groundbreaking, it is. So you definitely want to get an invite to it. And the invite's free. All you got to do is go to craftylink.com on the left-hand side at the top. Click on that, and it'll take you to a page where you can sign up, and you, and you won't miss a thing that way. And speaking of not missing a thing, make sure to subscribe to our channel and you won't miss a thing that way as well. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, the last thing that's coming up this week is installment three of A Reason to Friesen, the Christy Friesen Create Along Challenge. So be sure to watch for that video as well. Definitely. So thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>